I've recorded this addendum to the original Module 5 lecture because I want to demo ways to work with Tone in ChatGPT, and that was not something that I was doing last year when I created um, the Hyper AI video. So here we go. My demo is going to involve just 45 words that come from the beginning of a company's About Us page on their corporate website. The company is named Island. It's a B2B software company. They sell enterprise browsers uh, designed to increase security. So we're just going to look at, we're not going to look at the buttons or nav uh, text. We're only going to look at the sometimes changing one thing changes everything, our story, we watch the same narrative play itself out for decades, a better network solution here. You got it. So just this major text. It will make it easier to see what changes have been made. Version 4 is the most powerful version of OpenAI's LLM as of March 2024. I'm sure there's a new release coming soon. We're going to start by using prompting techniques that I covered in the tutorial that you finished earlier. All right, I've got text over here in my notes that I'm going to copy and paste. I'm using the technique that's called specifying roles, so it you're helping a tech writer who works for Island, a company that sells, blah, blah, blah. The writer's task is to write the copy for Island's About Us page on their website. Rewrite the drafted text to create a more formal style. And then I've copied the text from the website. Let's see what we get. Transformative impact through innovation, our journey. For decades, we've observed a recurring pattern. All right, I'm going to pull these examples up in just a few minutes so that we can compare them side by side. But for now, let's assume that you're not happy with what you've got. And so you decide that you want to try another technique. That technique's called reflection in the tutorial that you did earlier. So what do you know about writing in a formal style? Let's see what ChatGPT thinks. Precise language, objective tone, complex structure, third person perspective or consistency, proper formatting through a revision and proofreading, polite, referencing and citations. All right, so now, now that ChatGPT has told us what the principles are for formal writing, we're going to ask it to rewrite again. What you're seeing in my notes over here is my record of the responses ChatGPT gave to me earlier today. As you know, it never gives us the same thing twice. So now we're going to say rewrite the text to follow these key aspects of formal writing. I might have changed that into principles, which would be even more in line with what the wording that chat GPT used. But let's see what happens. Starts with a little explanation over. Oh, let's see. Occasionally. Wow. Yeah, that's that's quite formal, starting the, the title of the page or the heading with an adverb and a comma. A single alter R chronicle. All right, as I said, I'll, I'll bring these examples up side by side in a couple of minutes when I finish the screencast. Well, let's say we're happy with this, so then it's time to move on to doing our casual example. And I'm going to do it a little differently this time. I'm, I'm going to start with what is like a reflection. Uh, we might call it priming the pump. So before I have it create a casual style, I'm going to have it tell me what it knows about a casual business style. Conversational tone, simplicity, clarity, personal pronouns or personal touch, flexibility, directness, engagement with the audience. Okay. So, of course, what I'm going to do now is ask ChatGPT to 
rewrite the original text to follow these characteristics of casual business writing. Let's see what, how it does. Changing just one thing can make all the difference. Our story. We've seen it all before. Same old story playing out year after year. It notes that there are some changes here. As I said, we're going to bring these up in just a couple of minutes. Imagine that you're not happy with the amount of casual tone or the degree. One of the things I haven't showed you yet is that you can ask ChatGPT to adopt the style of a famous author. What I did in the tutorial was show you how you could train ChatGPT by giving it examples and saying this is good casual tone, this is bad casual tone. In this case, if there's an author who exemplifies the tone you're going for, in this case I said Kurt Vonnegut in Slaughterhouse-Five. All right, so it's adopt the writing style. See what it gives us. Change one thing, change everything. So it goes. <laughs> it's quite good. Our story? Decades watching the same old show. Better network solution here, smarter data protection there. All right, I think it was, it was quite uh, successful at that. If you're not a Vonnegut style, uh, style lover and that's not what you're going for, you could try another famous author. So let's do Hemingway. Um, Hemingway is certainly a model of direct and concise. Let's see what we get. Change one thing, everything changes. Our story, we saw it for decades, period. Better network, smarter tools, period. Solid, yes, period. Minor, though, period. Excellent. As you can see, there are many ways to alter the tone of voice in chat GPT-4. I promised to bring up the versions that were created by ChatGPT4 so that we could compare them briefly, though that's what I'm going to do here. This was our original text. In my original prompt, or my first prompt, I should say, I simply asked ChatGPT4 to make the original text more formal. It did that. Longer words, more Latin-based words rather than Germanic. Still has a we, does have uh, longer uh, sentences. So then I asked it to tell me what it knew about a formal writing style. After it did that, I asked it to revise again. And this is what I got. Definitely more formal, perhaps too formal to be believable, but it it definitely maximized the amount of formality or the degree of formality, especially in the vocabulary. It's interesting to me that it, it didn't seem to make as many subordinate clauses in combining uh, what were shorter sentences into longer ones, but it did what I asked it to do. Now we'll compare the original text with what was created when I asked ChatGPT4 to be more casual. So this time I started immediately with a reflection-like prompt that said, tell me what you know about casual. And then I said, revise the original text so that you follow those rules or those practices. I don't think that it's necessarily more casual than the original. I'd be interested to know what you think. Then I did a couple of things that this is the first time I've shown them to you. I asked ChatGPT4 to follow the writing style of some famous authors. I chose Vonnegut because he's certainly, his style is certainly more casual. Uh, it's interesting to me, change one thing, change everything, so it goes. Uh, introduced the the short senses, but also the, the sense of irony or sarcasm that Vonnegut is famous for. When I asked it to reproduce the text in the style of Hemingway, it did that too. Hemingway much more concise overall and for each individual sentence, a lot of periods. Very matter of fact. 
So I hope you get a sense now of what ChatGPT can do in helping you alter style. Part of your job now this week is to create your own maximally casual, formal versions of uh, a job ad, I believe I gave you. And then you're going to analyze what changes were made, what ones weren't made that maybe should have been in order to demonstrate to me that you've got a handle on how linguistic style creates tone of voice. Before I end, let me say just a couple of words about Playground. I'm at playground.openai.com. Because this video is already quite long, I'm only going to point out some of the functions that are available on Playground that would be especially useful for altering tone of voice in the content of a company who couldn't afford a tool like, like Acrolynx or Congri. Probably the best way to learn about the functions is to go to the documentation. Imagine that. You'll find that over here. When it opens, you'll see there's table of contents nav on the left that tells you all the different things. What I want you to go look at is under capabilities, something called fine tuning. You may remember from Dr. Bedker's reading this week that if you spend enough time playing with these Gen AI tools, you notice some tropes that make for ineffective writing, especially if you're looking for technical writing, plain language, that's where fine tuning comes in. Let me spend just a minute explaining. Remember that the large language models, LLMs, that are the basis of these Gen AI tools, remember that they were trained on a somewhat random, huge collection of text taken off the internet. If you think about what you read on the internet, if you think about a random selection, I'm sure you're going to realize this wasn't the highest quality writing possible, especially not the highest quality technical writing possible. Fine tuning allows us to build off that base model, but to use the kind of text that we want the model to emulate or to analyze. Note that the first use case OpenAI lists here for fine tuning is to alter the style, tone, formatting, or other qualitative aspects of its response. Give me a second to get Playground open here. What I want to show you is the functions that are for fine-tuning on the right-hand side of the window. The first one is temperature. Bedker describes this function or parameter as uh, resulting in more predictable and conservative outputs. That's a lower temperature. A higher temperature generates more varied and creative ones. That means we could predict that a lower temperature, less creativity is probably best for technical writing style, but we need to test it to find out. Now we'll move on to top P. Bedker says that this parameter is a way of telling the model to consider only the top percentage, probability-wise, of potential next words. A lower top P will make the model's choices narrower or more focused, while a higher top P allows for a wider array of possibilities. Again, I think that we can predict low top P would be better for tech writing. Next, the frequency penalty discourages the model from repeating the same words or phrases. A higher penalty would make the text more diverse and avoid redundancy. I'm guessing in good tech writing often, redundancy is a good thing. Moving on to the presence penalty. Bedger says increasing the penalty helps generate a narrative that's continuously moving forward introducing new elements and ideas rather than circling around the same concepts. I'm not sure how this one would play into tech writing. I encourage you to test it. So in this addendum to the Module 5 lecture, I've shown you a little bit about how ChatGPT4 can be used to help you alter tone of voice. I use some prompting techniques, some of the same ones I taught you about in the tutorial, and I taught you enough about using Playground so that you could probably go use it on your own. I hope you will. One thing's for sure about the career of a tech writer, and this has been true from the beginning, the ability and willingness to learn new tools is essential to our success.